I was fascinated with things, like I liked to feel them, the tactile textures of them. Fabrics, textures, cloth. I'm fascinated with that aspect of things, how things are made, whether they're natural or whether they're artificial, man-made products. And I looked at flowers in the same way in terms of the textures. They're so rich. So this idea of textures and my love of that melded with a visual made me want to go up close with things. It just called to me. Textures, feeling things, smelling things, becoming just part of it and incorporated into it. That seems to be something that's dear to me. I don't want to be distant from my subject matter. It's something I want to like delve into and be part of and be close to. My name is Rita Strawbauer. My name sign is R on the chest for Rita. And I'm from Wisconsin. That's where I grew up. I was born deaf. And my family is all hearing. My parents are foreign. They're from Switzerland. So it's a little difficult for me to lip read them because of the accent, but it works out fine. How did I begin my career in photography? Well, I forget how old I was. I was pretty young. My next door neighbors were having a garage sale. And on the table, as I was looking around, I saw that they had a really cheap camera, like some cheap plastic thing for like 50 cents. I think it was a Kodak model. And I thought, hmm, that'd be fun. 50 cents. I don't know if I want to spend my 50 cents on that or candy. I was really, really hankering for some of that candy on the table, too. But finally, I decided it'd be fun to have a camera. So I bought it, and I started taking a lot of pictures. As I got older, I started borrowing my mother's fancy German camera. And then I started really taking off and finding how much I really, truly love photography. And I started saving my money so that I could buy myself a better one. And I finally bought myself a Pentax. And this was my first real foray into buying photography equipment. And I did pretty well because it was a good camera. But I took a class. It was a nature photography class, which was wonderful. It was so perfect for me because I love to go out into the woods, be out in nature and take pictures. And I enjoyed it so much. It was great. And of course, I got an A in the class, <laughs> naturally, because I enjoyed it so much. And uh, my senior thesis, I decided, would be about nature photography. So that's what I did my senior thesis about. Nature. Like Mother Nature, God, that whole thing, that feels like that's something I'm trying to catch. That's the thing I'm trying to incorporate into my artwork and show to people so that they can look at that and get a sense of it. I see people call me like a Georgia O'Keeffe kind of artist, which is fine. Uh, I look at her work and I love her work. But I don't do it for the same reason that she does it or did it. Uh, the way I use flowers is in a different way for a different reason than her usage of flowers. So I'll take a picture, and then I'll basically do bracketing and take a lot of different pictures of the same subject, and then later comes a difficult part of screening out which ones uh, I'm eliminating and keeping the ones that I like best. I have to really think about it and go back and compare back and forth when I've got it narrowed down the two, and after I've finally chosen the one, then comes the fun process of coming up with a title. That's a really fun thing to do. Often, the first thing that comes to mind will be what I'll title it. Or sometimes I'll look at it and I'll think, well, what does it look like? Or maybe I'll ask my friends, what does this look like to you? And so we'll have a discussion about it and we'll sort of brainstorm. Maybe somebody will come up with a word. Sometimes I go into a dictionary and I try to find some really strange names and I do use odd titles for my pictures sometimes. Nature's perfect. It's a perfect model. There's nothing that needs to be changed about it. It's perfect as it is. And so my work is that I want to try to take pictures of that, capture it, and show it to the world. My hope is that people would come and look around at my work, and as they see it, somehow it'll help them to slow down, I guess I want to say, relax and enjoy life more. Of all the pictures that I've ever taken, the Purple Lady is my favorite. That's definitely the top one for me.
Now, you know, I have a lot of pictures of flowers that I've taken. And I can look at them all and like them a lot. But the one that really stands out in my mind is my absolute favorite is the Purple Lady. I lived in Boston a ways back. And right next to the Big Dig, there are these beautiful flower beds. And they're planted with pansies. Pansies are amazing. And they're very difficult to catch. They're always moving. Their slightest flutter of wind will make them move. So you have to wait and wait and wait. And when I took it, I don't know how you'd show this exactly, but I saw this sort of like this flirtatious, coy little purple lady. And that has to be my favorite because I think it showed that personality. It was such a challenge because when you take pictures outside, flowers are always moving. It's as if they're always breathing. They never stop. Sometimes I'll be ready to take the picture, but I have to wait and wait and wait until that perfect moment. And then it's as if it's holding its breath, and that's the moment that I have to take advantage of it because it never lasts for long because they're always in a state of motion. They're very dynamic. They never stop. That's the biggest challenge, I'd say. There's a deaf gentleman by the name of Clayton Valley, who's a famous deaf poet. And one of the pieces he performs is entitled The Cave. So I borrowed that title for this series of pictures also. That poem that he performs tends to be against cochlear implants, very strong feelings that he has against that, as he's explained. Though the pictures I took of my irises were taken right outside my bedroom window where I have a bed of them growing. And I took all these pictures and thought that I would like to call them The Cave as well. I think that anyone can become an adept photographer. It depends on how you look. It's all in the looking and taking time and ruminating about things. Like flowers. Sports are very, very fast. Sports photography is a whole different thing, but flowers require you to slow down. And there are other types of photography where people are very distant from their subject matter and they don't prefer to be close like I am but I prefer to be way close in and then you can always crop and that's how you make the picture better you know I'm a graduate of here from RIT back in 91 so I guess you would say RIT is my alma mater well, RIT is located on a swamp, and there's all these beautiful cattails growing around. So I thought, why not take some pictures of those cattails? And that's what this series is. And this is titled Whispering, because it makes me think about deaf people signing as if they're whispering or hearing people whispering to themselves. It's a very rich feeling to this. This is called eclipse. It's as if somebody's peeking on either side of this blade. Just peeking out from either side. This is called creation. It's as if everything's about ready to bust right through and be created. Secrets. Something's being held back, but it's just beginning to come out into the open so that everyone can see it. This photograph is entitled Piano Keys because it looks like a keyboard. And as if the music is coming right off the keys of that piano. This is entitled Puffed Pillows. And the reason why I call it that is because you look at each one of these and they look as if they could become a pillow that you could put your head on. This is called Sigh. A sigh. As if right before the moment of death, someone lets out a mournful sigh and then dies. This picture is called Ryanity, and this is a word that I made up. It's a combination of the word Ryana, which is the name of the flower, mixed with eternity. So I came up with a make-believe word, Ryanity. This photo is entitled Occultation, and it means something that's hidden from us and not easily seen. <laughs> 